over the last several weeks, we've talked about several important practical areas of your life that need to line up with who you really are so that Jesus can be seen through your life. But sometimes we blow it. We try and it just doesn't seem like it works. And that makes you maybe wonder, is it really even possible? Can I do it? And the answer is no, you can't. You can't do it in your own strength. That's why you need to be filled with the Spirit. Well, hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Discovery Zone Sunday School here at Falls Baptist Church, the place where you can discover God for yourself, obey His Word, and share Him with others. The place where we believe that God has a plan for your life and that He loves you more than you even know. We've been having a great time in Sunday school here, looking at the Word of God, and today's going to be no different. So go ahead and make sure you have your Bible with you. Get that pencil and piece of paper if you need that, so you're prepared to write down how God speaks to you today. We need to hear what God wants to teach us so that our lives can truly be changed by the power of His Holy Spirit through us. We normally go right into a game here, but I thought we'd switch things up a little bit today because some of you have been waiting anxiously all week thinking that you know the answer to... Okay, there's a lot I could say right now, but you don't really want me to say anything right now because all you want to know is what is the answer to the stumper from last week. You think you figured it out? And so we're going to find out right now. Did you unstump the stumper? Did you get the right answer? Let's find out now. Drum roll, please. The answer to last week's stumper is... The dove. That's right, the dove particularly the dove that flew from Noah's ark. First he came back with nothing, then he came back with the olive branch, and then he was gone. Didn't come back at all. Hope you figured out last week's stumper. I don't think it was too hard. I think it was, it was doable. And I know a bunch of you who sent in emails to kids at fallsbaptist.org did figure it out correctly, and I'm sure there were a lot more out there who did as well. Now, let's take a look at this next week's stumper. I think you'll be able to figure this one out too. Here it is. I might be small, but one thing I know, if I don't want to starve, I must be on the go. You can find me just twice in the words of the wise, but you'll see me all summer if you open your eyes. What am I? All right, you know what to do. If you think you know the answer, you can wait till next week, or if you'd rather find out sooner, you can send your answer to kids at fallsbaptist.org and I'll get back to you, let you know if you got the right answer, or at least if you're on the right track. And that's all we have for The Stump. Okay, hello. Oh, whoa, hello? Hello, are you in there? Hello? Is anyone in there? Whoop, hello? Whoop. Well, I don't know if they're there, but hey, whoa, all right. Uh, the Stumper helps you make sure that your mind is sharp here on Sunday morning. But we're going to find out today if your eyes are sharp, too. We're going to do something that we call... What's the difference? All right, today's game is super simple. I'm gonna take and put up on the screen two pictures that are almost identical, but not quite. You see, there's a few things that are different about them. And I want you to figure out in the time that's given, where are those differences? I'll tell you how many there are, and you see if you can find all of them before the time runs out. Then I'll show you what the differences were. Ready? Here's our first one. Uh, maybe don't draw uh, pictures on circles or, or X's on your screen. Mom and Dad probably wouldn't appreciate that. So find some other way to mark in your mind where the differences are. All right, here we go. Ready? First one, go.
All right, time's up. Did you find all 10 differences in these pictures? Let's take a look at them. Here they are. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and see the waving hand there? 10. Well, that wasn't too hard, was it? I think you can get this next one. This one only has eight differences, but it took me a little while to find a couple of them. Ready? Let's see how you do on this second picture of a castle. Go. All right, did you find all eight? Let's see. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How are those eyes doing? Are you catching all the differences? All right, let's see how you do on this last one. There's 10 differences on this final one. I think you can find all of them. Let's go. Okay, that wraps up our time to find the differences on this one. Let's see if you were able to find all 10. Some of them weren't quite as obvious. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
there you have it. We asked, what's the difference? Now you know. Okay, boys and girls, I hope your eyes were sharp this morning. Now it's time for us to turn to our study of the Word of God. So get your Bible and let's all find Ephesians chapter number 5. We've been talking about just really practical things of how our life should look when we're living out the new you, when Jesus is living out through us who we are now that we've trusted Him. But there's one really important truth that we need to understand, and we've talked a little bit about it, that you can't do this on your own. We're not strong enough. We're not good enough. We can't make ourselves do right in our own strength. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to talk about today from Ephesians chapter number 5. And we're going to start in verse number 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, Paul doesn't use quite as many big words in these verses, but he does use some interesting concepts that we need to make sure that we understand. So, let's start by asking that big question, what is going on in these verses? The first thing that we need to notice is that Paul begins with a command not to do something, right? What is that command? That's right, he says, and be not drunk with wine. Now, wine was an alcoholic drink. It was something that had the, a chemical in it that if you drink it, it affects your brain. It affects the way that you think. And literally, this, when you drink that, it's like now your own thoughts aren't controlling your decisions. Now they're being influenced by the chemical from the alcohol that's making you now think differently. It's, it's literally like that drink that you drank is controlling you instead of your own thoughts controlling you, your own mind making clear decisions. And he's saying, listen, if you're a follower of Jesus, you shouldn't have anything that makes it so you th can't think clearly. You shouldn't let something like alcohol be controlling you. And why? What's the reason that Paul gives? Right? He goes on and tells us, he says, wherein is excess. That word excess means wild behavior, unrestrained, literally just kind of letting go and doing whatever. It's sinful, wild behavior that's not what a believer should be a part of. But that's what happens when we let something like alcohol control us, when we don't think clearly anymore, and so we're just doing all sorts of wild, sinful things. Now, he says that's not what a believer should be doing. That's not right for one of God's children. Instead, you should be doing something else. What's the command that he tells us to do instead in the second half of the verse? That's right, he says, but be filled with the Spirit. So the first half of the verse, he says, don't be drunk with wine. And the second half, he says, instead, be filled with the Spirit. So this shouldn't be part of a Christian's life, but being filled with the Spirit should be a part of our life. So what do you think he means by be filled? What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? That's a pretty important question, right? So let's see. When we think of being filled, we can think about a cup being filled up, right? That's the first thing that comes to my mind. And that certainly is kind of the idea, but not completely. Because remember, what is the first half? That's going to help us understand what the second half is mean, it says. The first half says, don't let alcohol fill you and influence your brain the way that you think, influence the decisions that you make. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill you and influence the decisions that you make. Let Him control you. Don't let something sinful control you. Let the Holy Spirit control you instead. So when we're talking about being filled with the Spirit, we're really talking about letting the Spirit have full control in your life. Now, that doesn't mean he treats you like a ro robot and you just do whatever he says to do with his remote control. No, that means that you're listening to him and you're letting him tell you the next step you should take and you're taking the step to obey. So the Holy Spirit says, 
uh, you need to go apologize to your younger brother that you did something wrong towards. And you say, all right, I'll do that. And you go and apologize. And the Holy Spirit says, you need to go do this nice thing for your mom. And you say, all right, Holy Spirit, I'll do that. And you obey. It's letting him be in control instead of you being in control. Now, it's important to notice, who is the one being filled? We are, right? It tells us to be filled. So are we filling ourselves with the Holy Spirit? No. No, we don't fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. It's something that we receive, the filling of the Holy Spirit. So what are we being filled with? That's right, the Holy Spirit. He's filling us. And he's God, right? So everything that the Holy Spirit is should be filling and controlling us. Well, that's pretty awesome, isn't it? So who's the one who does the filling? Hmm. What does the verse say? And be filled with the Spirit. You know, the verse doesn't specifically say who does the filling, but I think it's pretty clear. You see, not only is the Holy Spirit what we are filled with, but he also is the one who fills us with himself. Just like if I had a glove and I was going to put my hand in that glove, my hand would now be filling the glove. That's what it's filled with. But my hand is also what did the filling. So see, the Holy Spirit is the one who fills you and me, and he fills us with himself. Now, when you got saved, the Holy Spirit moved inside of you. You got all of the Holy Spirit that you'll ever get. But that doesn't mean that he has full control of you. You see, we have to be willing to let him control us completely. Now, if we are the ones being filled and the Holy Spirit is the one doing the filling, then how how do we obey Paul's command to be filled with the Spirit? That'd be like you telling me, uh, Mr. Mueller, be hit with a broom. Okay, um, how do I do that? Now, if you commanded me and said, Mr. Mueller, hit somebody with the broom. Okay, I know what to do then. No problem, right? Hitting somebody with the broom, that's easy. But the command to be hit with the broom, it can only mean one thing, right? It literally has to mean, let yourself be hit with the broom. Like, stand there and take it, right? I didn't say to do it. Yeah, something like that. So, allow yourself to be filled by the Spirit, is what he's saying. He's saying, you need to let the Holy Spirit have control of your life. See, we don't like to do that, do we? We like to be in control. We like to say, well, I want to do what I want to do. I want to go where I want to go and say what I want to say. I want to hit somebody when I want to hit somebody, and I want to take something when I want to take it. But what Paul is saying is, allow the Holy Spirit to be the one in control of your life instead of you. Be willing to say, Holy Spirit, I'll let you tell me what to do, and I'll obey what you tell me to do. You can be in charge instead of me. You see, if you'll let the Holy Spirit be in charge, if you'll let Him be in control, then He can fill you, and He can enable you. He can give you the strength to do what you couldn't do. That's what it means to be filled with the Spirit. Now, what are the results that we see here in these verses of being filled with the Spirit? What are the specific things that if we let the Spirit control us is going to happen in our lives? Notice, first of all, in verse number 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. When you let the Holy Spirit be in control of your life, you know what He does? He fills your heart with praise. He encourages you. He helps you to have a heart that just wants to sing about how good God is because you're experiencing how good God is in your life. Because the Holy Spirit is good and He fills you and He'll fill you with joy and the ability to encourage others and help them see how good God is through the songs and words of praise that come from your mouth. 
See, do you want to be someone who praises all the time, who has words filled with joy? Or are you someone who grumbles all the time? And when you're around, oh boy, well, people are upset and it makes them sad because you're angry and sad. No, we should have hearts of praise, but we can only have a heart that's filled with praise all the time when we're letting the Spirit control us all the time. What does verse number 20 say? It says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So not only a heart filled with praise, not only an attitude that's not sad and grumbling anymore, but an attitude that is full of thanksgiving for everything. Did you just say everything, Mr. Mueller? Everything. That's what it says, giving thanks in all things. Wow. Sometimes there's things that are hard to be thankful for, right? I mean, it's easy to be thankful when things are nice, when the weather is nice outside and when we don't have to do school and when we get something given to us that's nice. It's easy to be thankful then, but it's a lot harder to be thankful when you're given a test or a job to do that isn't fun or something kind of sad happens. It's harder to be thankful then, but God says when the Holy Spirit is filling you, you can be thankful all the time. You see, we like to grumble and complain and whine when things don't go the way we want. But if the Holy Spirit is filling you, He'll give you thankfulness and praise. But not just that, not only will it affect your attitude. Instead of being whining and complaining and grumbling, you'll have praise and, and, and thanksgiving in your heart. It also affects your actions. Look what verse 21 says. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, the word submitting here is the idea of working together, getting along with others. It's the idea of being a team player, not saying you have to do it my way, but being willing to listen to others and let others lead sometimes and do what others want to do sometimes. It's that relationship of working peacefully with others. That's what we're supposed to do. Well, we can't do that by ourselves. In our own strength, we want to be the most important, and we want to do what we want to do, and we want everyone to do what we want to do. But when the Holy Spirit is in control, He gives you the strength. He leads you to be able to treat others the way that Jesus would treat them. That's what happens when we let the Holy Spirit control us. You know, it really is a question of who is filling you. Are you filling you or are you letting the Holy Spirit fill you? Are you letting sinful things control you? Are you letting just your own lazy, selfish desires control you? Or are you letting the Holy Spirit control you? It makes a big difference in your Christian life and in how far you're able to go, how much you're able to grow, and how much God can use you. It's kind of like this little experiment I did outside. Let's go take a look. All right, boys and girls, we are here now to talk about something very exciting, something you have seen all your life. Something we call a balloon. Yeah, this is just a normal balloon. You've seen these before. Ordinary balloon, nothing special about it. But what's a balloon for? Uh, we use it for decoration, right? To, to make things look exciting, to entertain kids, or they're, they're fun to play with. But that's what a balloon is, is kind of for. So is a balloon any good when it's like this? No, in fact, we, we don't ever use balloons like this. We always fill them with something. And you know, I want you to think of this balloon as your life. Your life, well, it will do different things depending on what you fill it with. You see, we could fill this balloon with a variety of things. For example, we could fill this balloon with, with water, and that would make it a water balloon. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. All right, here I am with the water balloon. Uh, it's a very big water balloon, if I might say. Um, I'm a little bit nervous holding it because, well, if it breaks, that's a lot of water. Um, but let's say we fill our lives with sinful things, okay, things that are not right for us to do. Those, uh, well, they might seem to fill our lives and they might seem to make us happy for a little bit of time, but 
in the long run? Are they going to help us rise to new heights? Are they going to help us to be all that God made us to be? No. In fact, all that they're going to make us do is eventually they're going to destroy our life. Kind of like this. Okay, so that might not be the way we want to be um, with that. So let's say we could fill our lives with something that's more natural, but just kind of doing what we feel like doing, doing what's normal, like filling a balloon with air. All right, we can fill a balloon with air and that's pretty normal. And Hey, that might look good, look good for uh, for now. It looks good on the outside. Hey, this is a, this is just it's it's a nice balloon now. It looks useful. But what's going to happen? Will this balloon really go anywhere? Is it going to accomplish anything? Well, not really. It just kind of falls. Now I could maybe give it a little bit more direction, but oh, nope, it's not going to last. Uh, let's try a little bit harder. Yeah, it can go a little. It doesn't really go anywhere. Well, boys and girls, that balloon, it didn't really go far without me doing a whole lot of work to try to get it to go somewhere. There's got to be something more that a balloon like that could do, a balloon like that could be. Some way it could, could really soar to new heights. And there is, but it has to do with what the balloon is filled with. All right, I've got one more balloon here. It's just an ordinary balloon. Looks just like the others, but there's one thing that's completely different, and that's what's on the inside. See, inside this balloon is something called helium, and helium is lighter than air, so helium floats. You see, when there's helium, helium in the balloon, it can do something that it couldn't do any other way. Just like when we have the Holy Spirit filling us, and when He's in control, we can do things that we couldn't do any other way, because it's not us, in fact, that does it. It's the Holy Spirit. So let's see what happens when I give this balloon a little lift. Let's see. Whoa, there it goes. Whoa, look at it go. It's going crazy high. Now that's a little different than it did before. There it goes. We might lose it in the sun. Now that is going crazy far. Do you see how far it's gone? just a tiny dot now. Well, boys and girls, what makes the difference is what are you allowing to fill you? Are you allowing sinful things to fill your life? Or are you just filling your life with whatever you feel like doing, what's natural to you, your own flesh, your own desires? Or are you allowing the Holy Spirit to fill you so that he can enable you to do things that you could never do in your own strength? That balloon's really far away. In fact, I can barely see it. Well, boys and girls, I don't know about you, but I want the Holy Spirit to be the one filling me so that he can use me to do whatever he wants to do so that I don't have to live my life just doing things that are ordinary, that don't really matter, that don't make a difference. I want to let the Holy Spirit fill me and let him be in control so that he can use me to make a real difference in other people's lives, so that I can do and be everything that he wants me to be. You see, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that leads us to our next question. What do we learn about God from these verses? Now, I don't know if you've ever thought this before, but I know I've thought, why didn't God just make it so that we have to do what he wants us to do? I mean, why did God give us the ability to actually choose? Well, do I want to follow God or do I want not want to follow God? Do I want to go my way or do I want to go God's way? Why did God do that? I think God did that because he wanted us to have to make the choice. You see, if we didn't have a choice, we would be like remote control cars or robots doing exactly what we were supposed to do, but not having any choice or any ability to love. 
You see, God made you and me in His image. And a part of that is the fact that we have a choice on whether or not we're going to serve Him. He made us with the ability to have a relationship with Him. You see, birds and animals, they don't have a relationship with God like you and I can have. We can actually love Him and know Him. And it's not that God needed us to love Him, but He knew when He made us that we would never really come even close to understanding how much He loves us unless we could also choose whether or not we wanted to love Him. You see, because we can love God, because we can choose to follow Him, we can understand just a little bit about how much He really loves us. So the ability to choose helps us to understand how much God truly loves us and that, well, He wants a real relationship with you and me. Is that amazing to you that the God who made everything wants to know you? He wants you to have a real personal relationship with Him. Not just to talk about Him or know about Him in your head, but to actually learn what it means to have the Holy Spirit lead you and to know that I'm following God and God just talked to me through His Word and I can talk to Him in prayer. It's a real relationship with God and that's an amazing privilege. Now, what do we learn about people in these verses? The first question that comes to my mind is why do people need to be filled with the Spirit? I mean, why is it a big deal? I think the first half of verse number 18 helps us to realize it's because we need something to fill us, and we're either going to be filled with sinful things that don't really satisfy us in the end. All they do is destroy us, like that balloon popping all over the ground. Or we're going to be filled, we're going to be satisfied with Him, things that really do satisfy us. A person who really brings us real joy. You see, we were made to be filled with something. And so, it's really a choice. What am I going to be filled with? What am I going to allow to be important, to be in control of my life? Something is going to be. And so that's why, if we really want to have a happy life, a life that's truly filled with joy and purpose, and that actually does what it's supposed to do, well, we need to be filled with the Spirit, because otherwise our life is going to be empty. It's going to be filled with nothing but sadness and destruction. Listen, we might be able to do something nice for someone every once in a while, or we might be able to say a kind word in our own strength, but well, we can't have a life of joy and a life that really makes a difference in our own strength. We can't. We're, we're, we're weak. We don't have the ability to serve God in our own strength. We only can serve God through His strength. Otherwise, we're going to fall short every time. That's why we need the filling of the Spirit. But I also can't help but ask, what is it that keeps us from being filled with the Spirit? Remember, being filled with the Spirit is allow yourself to be filled with the Spirit, just like allow yourself to be hit with the broom. Okay, allow yourself to be filled with the Spirit. I think the reason we're not filled with the Spirit a lot is because we just don't want to let Him be in control. We want to be in control of our lives. We want to have the say, this is what I want to do, and I'm going to do what I want to do. We don't like to give up control. We like to hold on to it. We like to be the boss of our life. But being filled with the Spirit means... I'm not the boss of my life anymore. The Holy Spirit is. I'm letting Him tell me what to do. And if He's the boss, then I obey whatever the boss says. Are you willing to let the Holy Spirit be your boss? Are you willing to let Him fill you and give you His joy and use you in a great way? Or do you want to hold on to being the boss? It's a pretty important question. Which brings us to that question, what does God want us to do because of what we've seen in these verses? Let me ask you, 
Is your life filled with praise and joy and gratitude and working well together with other people? Or is your life filled with grumbling and complaining, strife between people, anger, not getting along? What characterizes your life? Are you letting the Spirit be in control? Or are you trying to be in control? Are there sinful things that you're allowing to control the way that you think and the decisions that you make? Or are you letting the Holy Spirit control the decisions that you make? Would you let the Holy Spirit fill you this week? Would you go to Him and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to fill me today. I want you to be in control. And whatever you tell me to do, I will obey. He wants to use you. So I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to write down a prayer to the Holy Spirit that you're willing to pray. Maybe you're, you're willing to say, Holy Spirit, I'm willing to let you have full control in my life. I'm willing to let you right now tell me what to do and I'll obey. You know, boys and girls, that's a decision you have to make every day to let the Holy Spirit be in control. It's not just something you do once. It's something you have to keep on doing. So maybe you need to write down that I will let the Holy Spirit have control every day. Maybe you say, I'm not sure if I really want the Holy Spirit to be in control of my life yet. Or maybe you need to write down a prayer that says, Holy Spirit, would you help me to be willing to let you be in control? Would you work in my heart and show me how to be willing and obey? You see, the Holy Spirit wants to fill you. He wants to use you in that special way. But you have to be willing to let Him have control of your life. Well, that wraps things up for us here today. And remember, if you think you have the answer to the stumper, you can send that to me at kids at fallsbaptist.org. Also, if you have any other questions or suggestions, feel free to send that to me as well, at kids at fallsbaptist.org. I'd love to hear from you. Well, that's what we have for this week. We'll see you again next time here on Discovery Zone Sunday School at Falls Baptist Church. See you later.